Dr. Pepper, Eckrich, Goodyear, Maui Jim. Good morning and welcome to today's college football playoff national championship head coaches news conference. We are joined by LSU head coach Ed Ogeron and Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney. Coach Ogeron, we'll start with opening remarks from you. Yeah, what a great experience we've had. Uh, what a great journey for this football team. I want to congratulate Coach Sweeney and his outstanding achievements so far that he's done as a coaching career. I think he's a model uh, for other coaches that have been interim coaches, have been had success. Uh, He's a friend of mine. I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for his football team. I want to thank the uh, playoff system for uh, having us here in the championship game. New Orleans has been great. It'll be a great game. Coach Sweeney, when you're ready. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, appreciate all y'all being here this morning. And it's been a, a wonderful experience for our guys. Super proud of our team. And uh, just appreciative of all the hard work that's gone into uh, making this a great experience for our our, uh, our, our players, and, and uh, New Orleans has been great. Uh, looking forward to an awesome game uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, really, really uh, amazing season that uh, LSU has had. Uh, Coach O and the job that he's done, his staff, just, just incredible. Uh, and this is the way it should be. You know, two great, great teams uh, that uh, have worked extremely hard to get to this point and, uh, you know, to be able to uh, have it culminate tomorrow night in front of the whole country and probably a lot of people across the world uh, to, to watch a great college football game. Uh, it's just uh, it's a, it's awesome things, a blessing to be a part of. We'll now start our <clears throat> Q&A portion. Again, raise your hand. Let us get you the mic. Please do give us your name and affiliation. We're going to start first right here on the <coughs> right side of the... Jacques Doucet, WAFB TV in Baton Rouge. Coach Ogeron, your team throughout the year, no matter the quote unquote big game, there never seems to be any nerves or nervousness. When you go into a game like this, how are you approaching the psychology of, you know, it's easy to say it's another game, but you're in a national championship. Yeah, you know, we didn't talk about going to play for the national championship. We talked about we have to prepare to beat Clemson one game at a time, just like we've done. Uh, we have trust the process. Uh, today is Focus Friday. Uh, the guys are getting excited. They are getting antsy. I can feel it. I'm getting antsy too. But I think that we have to continue to work up through game time. They're going to make plays. We're going to make plays. We have to work for 60 minutes and focus on winning the game and not worry about all the other stuff. Block out the noise just like we did all year. Going to come over here to our right. Uh, Andrea Adelson with ESPN.com for Dabo. You've been asked a lot about the last decade of Clemson football. If there was one word you could use to describe it, what would it be and why? Uh, the last decade? Transformative. Uh, is that a word? Uh, we, we've, we've transformed Clemson. And uh, I, my, the next decade is the roaring 20s. Uh, so I'm excited. About, I heard those were great. So hopefully we can relive those. Come over here on our left side in the middle. For Dabo, um, th you possibly winning 30 straight games, that's only happened six times since the 50s. Three out of four championships only happened th three times, I think. Back-to-back uh, -back national championships, undefeated hasn't happened since Nebraska in the 90s. Do you give any of this information to your team to sort of say, hey, listen, you have a chance to not be, just be champions, but to be all-time great champions? Well, I mean, I mean, this is 2020. Uh, I don't have to give them anything. Uh, I mean, they just get woken up in the middle of the night uh, with breaking alerts. Uh, I mean, it's just the information is overload, overloaded into their world, into, you know, today. Uh, so I don't have to, I don't have to give them anything. They see it, they hear it. It's it's a constant. They know. Uh, certainly, we we reinforce. Uh, from time to time, you know, uh, what their opportunity is. But, uh, you know, there's, it's not like we're giving them anything they don't know. They, they know, they're very well aware of, of uh, you know, what they've been able to achieve. And, you know, listen, I mean, what, regardless of what happens in the game tomorrow night, it's, it's really been a historic run. And, uh, you know, to win two out of the last three national championships, 
is, is uh, amazing. And I'm just super proud of all of our teams that have worked so hard to just be the best they can be. And that's really our goal. That's, that's it. Uh, sometimes you get beat. And uh, our goal is to be the best we can be every single year. And, and you know, winning a national championship is a byproduct of that commitment. And uh, so just thankful for all of our teams. And they're well aware of all the opportunity and all that stuff. But that's really not the focus. I think, I think when you focus on that, you're, you're focusing on the magnitude of the moment. And you lose the joy of the moment. And that's all we try to focus on is just, just being great where our feet are. And, uh, you know, just, just have some fun uh, doing what we do to get ready. Go over here to our right in the middle section, halfway back. To both of you, a uh, similar question. Coach O, you've had a lot of reaction to your accent over the years. I know some of the players have impersonations and things like that. How important is the accent to you and what it represents? And Coach Swinney, I know that you present a certain way publicly um, your players say you're the exact same guy to them. How important is that authenticity to you? You know, being Cajun, I'm very proud of being Cajun. My uh, grandparents uh, didn't speak English, and my mother and father spoke Cajun French at the table. And they, when they wanted to talk about me, they spoke Cajun French, so I learned Cajun French. <laughs> and uh, so I'm, I'm, ex you know, I'm excited to be at LSU, uh, at home, where we're proud of our Cajun heritage, we're proud of Louisiana. Uh, I just feel at home here. Uh, people that made fun of my accent before, I thank them. That gave me internal motivation to do better. So I thank them to be motivators in my career. <laughs> Coach uh, Sweeney? Well, I mean, it's ironic. I, I obviously grew up um, in Alabama, and sometimes I meet people along the way, and they'd say, and where you get a name like Dabo? And so sometimes I just didn't want to tell. I'd just say, well, I'm Cajun, uh, D-A-B-E-A-U-X, uh, Dabo. <laughs> and I just, you know, going about my business. Um, so I kind of feel at home here too. Uh, you know, but uh, anyway, it, it's, I just think that you just got to be who you are. Somebody asked me a question yesterday. They said, you know, and they were talking about Coach O and myself about, um, you know, I guess how we – handle ourselves or something and um and i i just you know i i don't i don't know how to do any i don't know how to be somebody else all i know how to do is be myself and if that's not good enough it's not good enough uh so i'm not really trying to be someone else um and i just i just think you have to just be genuine and be transparent and if, if you if you just speak the truth you don't have to remember what you say uh and uh you can speak from the heart and sometimes people don't like that, but at least you know it's the truth to you. So that's all that matters. And, and just, I think, again, just being uh, genuine um, in everything that you do. And, and man, that's what, that's what I love about Coach O uh, and have for a long time, not just since he's been at LSU. I mean, he's, he's one of the most genuine, passionate people that you see in this business. And uh, it resonates, you know, with his players. And uh, so that's why he's been so successful. Come back over here to our left, right in the middle. Hey, Dabo, uh, Will Vanderbilt with the Clemson Insider. I want to ask you two questions. First, uh, what's the status of Niles Pickney? And then second, I um, also want to ask you about Brad yesterday and what were you doing? Were you watching the game? And, and what did you say to Coach Brownell after their big win yesterday? Uh, yeah, Niles is, is – we're hopeful. But uh, he's, he's, if he plays, he'll be limited. Uh, still battling that ankle. So uh, – and then um, – uh, but Brad, I, I actually – uh, got to see the, the overtime <clears throat> part. So I didn't see anything up until that. And so it was, I saw the best part. It was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, I mean, that's been a, that's an amazing streak. Um, so, and then I was with Dan Radakovich shortly after that. And so it was pretty cool. And, but really just happy for Brad and his whole team. Uh, I text Amir Sims <clears throat> right away and, and text back and forth with him last night. Just super proud of those guys. I mean, uh, to be able to accomplish something that nobody's done. You're talking about 59 years, man. That's, I mean, you'd think sooner or later somebody, you know, I mean, somewhere along the way you'd win one. Uh, but it was, it was pretty amazing. Long time coming, obviously, over 90 years, I guess. Uh, so special moment for Coach B and, and uh, 
his team, and for Clemson. Stay in the same area right over here to our left. Coach, over to your left. Trevor Gross, CUTigers.com. I understand that you had to move practice uh, to the Hilton Ballroom yesterday because of the weather while LSU was in the uh, Palatial Saints indoor facility. <laughs> uh, just curious how that affected your preparation and uh, we have any sort of a walkthrough today. Yeah, we might have had the best practice we've had all year. Uh, and we had the same opportunity to go to the Palatial uh, Saints facility. It's not like... You know, it's just crazy how people put these narratives out there right away. Uh, we had the same exact opportunity to go there, but we were going to have to change our schedule and just didn't want to do that. Um, and obviously the weather uh, was, was nasty. So uh, it was great. I mean, it's massive. And this is a, this was a, it was a Thursday practice for us. And our Thursday practices are, are um, kind of jog through anyway and this was practice nine day 10 in a row that we've been together so it was even lighter than that but it was a lot of fun it was great energy uh i mean listen i mean <laughs> both these teams are ready to play i mean you can only practice so much uh so it was a great practice it was a great day and and um thankful that we had a really good facility and again we we could have done the same exact thing i just i just chose not to to change our schedule up and stay on course and it's great we're going to go right here in the center, in the back. Uh, this one's for Coach O, Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV in Baton Rouge. Coach, we've marveled a lot about Joe's preparation and his thoroughness in that preparation. Have you ever been around a college player who really doesn't want to partake in any of the college scene? <laughs> and has that rubbed off on the guys that have been around yeah. him? I've never been around a player like Joe. And obviously, he's very talented and he's a leader, but... Day in and day out, he's the same guy. Uh, very focused, focus in on a task at hand. It's about execution and winning and being great. And um, last game, you know, he had a, he threw what eight touchdowns and he wasn't satisfied. I mean, that's him. And you go out to practice and I'll ask him, "How's it going?" I go to I go to pass rush and I'll come to seven on seven. How's it going, Joe? Rarely does he tell me everything's fine. And uh, the guys are perfectionists. It does rub off on our football team. He's an outstanding leader. We're going to go in the back on the television riser. Coach O, Andrew Clay, KATC and Lafayette. A lot of these kids obviously on your team wanted to play in the Superdome in high school, but even Grant Delpit said a really great story about how he moved away after Katrina. Do you find that the players are taking this game more personally because of the city it's in? I do believe that. I do believe obviously there's a lot of things that you can look at in this game for motivation. And the only motivation that we've used is to finish strong and focus on winning the game. But those external motivation uh, are there. Uh, these guys have always wanted to play at the Dome. Grant is from New Orleans. His family was displaced from Katrina. All his family will be there. It will mean more to our guys uh, that we're playing here in New Orleans for the championship, no question. Come right down here in the front, over on slightly to our right. Uh, th this one's for Ed Ogeron, Brooks Cabina from The Advocate. Ed, um, two questions. One, could you update us on uh, where Damian Lewis is at for you guys? Yep. And uh, the other, um, last night at, uh, at, at the Eddie Robinson, you, your mentor Brian Kennedy yep. mentioned him. What kind of uh, moment did y'all have and the things that he might have said to you then? Yeah, well, uh, Damian's ready to play. Uh, you know, Jack Marucci and Tommy Moffat, those guys, Shelly, everybody down there, they do a tremendous job. I've, I've never been a, around a training staff that gets guys back so fast. Uh, last night, uh, I accepted an award on behalf of our staff. Uh, it was very prestigious. So I want to thank the Eddie Robinson family. I think it was, uh, it was really held in a first-class manner. What an honor uh, to meet all those people, to meet his family. Uh, Brian Kennedy was a mentor of mine in, uh, in Los Angeles, California <clears throat> for – I think for two years straight, I called him at six o'clock every morning and he answered the phone every morning. And uh, he helped me out in my personal life. So I wanted him to be here yesterday to, for that event. And he's a lifelong friend. We're gonna go all the way back in the back on our left. This for, this for both coaches, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports, for both you guys. How do you define a dynasty in college football and what's the earliest one that you guys remember? You got it, Coach. <laughs> a dynasty, uh, I guess. I guess a team that that wins a lot. 
It's the only thing I can think of. Uh, the first one, shoot, um, dynasty. I mean, I, I, I mean, for me personally, I think about Coach Bryant. Uh, I can't help but think about Coach Bryant. I grew up growing up in Alabama and, and uh, you know, what he did in the 60s and the 70s, uh, winning, you know, numerous uh, national championships. And, <clears throat> and there's some debate, probably could have won some more. I guess back in those days, you just kind of voted on them. Uh, I think some of those years, you even voted on them before the bowl games. Uh, but anyway, um, I mean, certainly Alabama and then what Coach Saban has done. Uh, I mean, just I guess the definition is just doing something over and over and over very, very with, a, with an unbelievable consistency. Um, think about John Wooden. I know that's not football, but didn't he win 10, 10 championships in a row? Uh, I think about the Bulls, you know, so I, I, I don't know about all the football dynasties. I don't think there's been many. Uh, it's just so hard to win consistently for a long period of time. Uh, Bobby Bowden at Florida State, they had 14 10-plus win seasons in a row. Uh, probably Oklahoma had a, had a run there. They were pretty unstoppable. So it's kind of what I pops into my head. Yeah, you know, those are, those are things for you guys to write about. Uh, my mind can't even think about that right now. I'm a, <laughs> I, I have been a football fan. But I'm on Focus Friday, man. That's all I know. <laughs> We're going to go back to the uh, riser in the back on our left. Shakira Martin with News 15 out of Lafayette. Coach O, um, one could argue and say that your offense hasn't faced a team as dominant that Clemson presents. What part in the past success has made you guys ready for this exact moment of tomorrow? Well, uh, first of all, uh, Brent Venables, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you watch their tape. They're in the right place at the right time. Uh, he knows how to attack protections. Uh, they use that number 11 in uh, great spots. you got to know where he's at all the time. But, you know, the teams that we played, we played some pretty good defenses, and uh, our guys have done a good job. Obviously, uh, with our offense, <clears throat> we have seen new defenses that we haven't practiced against so sometimes. Sometimes we've seen the same defense. Uh, I think this game is going to come down to adjustments made during the game. Obviously, uh, Clemson's had a lot of time to practice. We've had a lot of time to practice. Sometimes people put in something new, sometimes they don't. They may run the same stuff. We watched every play they've run, but they've watched every play we run. So we're going to be prepared. But I think when it comes down to Coaches making the proper calls, but I think what we have an advantage of with this year, uh, and more than any other team I've been with, that Joe can execute those plays and we put playmakers in space and let them play. Come right down here, the center, center aisle in the back. Gene, Gene Sapikoff of the Charleston Post and Courier. Dabo, this is the last ride for Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott as co-OCs. What have they meant to you since you were their position coach up until now? Oh, they're great. I mean, I've, I've been at Clemson 17 years, uh, so they've been with me really the whole way. Uh, Tony played for me, uh, was a GA for me, or not a GA, but, but a captain for me. Jeff, when I came to Clemson, it was his senior year. He had just finished, and, um, and then so I kind of – tutored and mentored him uh, his first few years as he was getting into the business, and then he became a GA. Uh, and then when he was a GA when I was named interim, and so I, I promoted him right away. <clears throat> and that was just really based on my experience that I had had with him uh, working with me in camps. Uh, <clears throat> you know, all the when, when I was an assistant, I ran the camps and clinics and coaching stuff, all the you know, whatever went on within the program. Uh, from a logistics standpoint, and, and I would use all the GAs and stuff, and Jeff was just always an above and beyond guy and always knew if I ever got a job that he'd be one of the first guys I hired. So just kind of worked out. So those guys have been with me from day one, and not just them, Brad Scott. You know, Brad, Brad was the offensive coordinator when I came to Clemson. I'm not at Clemson if it wasn't for Brad. Obviously, Tommy brought me in to interview me, but, uh, you know, Brad had to, had to sign off and uh, as the OC, and, um, and I've been with Brad for 17 years, every step of the way, 
so those guys have been great. But Tony and Jeff, <clears throat> it's been fun to watch them grow and, and develop. And, and then uh, back in 2014, uh, when we had an opening, I uh, was able to, you know, just promote the two of them. They both, they both deserved it. Uh, and so that's why I made them co-OCs. And, and they've done an amazing job, obviously, uh, since that time. So I'm excited for Tony to be able to, you know, take it over just himself. And uh, it'll be awesome for him. And uh, also a little more responsibility for Streeter. And then obviously Jeff uh, getting this great opportunity at South Florida. Really happy for him. We're going to slide over to the other side of the middle column. Coach Sweeney, uh, when you played LSU in the Chick-fil-A Bowl back in 2012, Brent Venables, your defensive coordinator, joked that a trick play for LSU was a play-action pass. Can you talk about just how much LSU has changed offensively since then and take some well, humor in that? Yeah, well, if I remember correctly, they threw two passes on that last series. Uh, so they came out of the gate, first down, completed it, and then they had back-to-back play actions and uh, uh, incomplete on one and we batted one down and uh, that gave us a chance to because to, I was able to save timeouts and that gave us a chance to get the ball back and uh, <clears throat> go win the game. So uh, ironic that you bring that up. But, you know, listen, I, what I remember about that team is that's as talented a team, as a, especially defensively, that I've ever been around. I mean, I've never – I mean, I think the entire – two deep and maybe even into the three deep <laughs> went to the NFL. Uh, we were we were very fortunate to win that game. I mean, we just made just enough plays. Uh, our best player got hurt the second game. Uh, but what, what they're doing offensively now is, is obviously way, way, way different. Uh, but they were a physical football team, and they still are. But yet now they, they, they're distributing the ball to so many different guys. I mean, everybody touches the ball. And uh, it's made them fun. It's made them exciting. You can t see they play with great confidence and energy. And then, uh, and then this quarterback is, is special. Go back over to the center. Uh, Coach O, I've heard Clemson's answers about the uh, long delay until you play. Um, I was just curious. I hadn't heard your thoughts. Is this the right amount of time for this game? Do you feel the preparation was needed? You know, for us, we needed the rest. And uh, we give our guys ample rest. Uh, we practiced four days. We gave them three days off. And then we went through a reg regular game week uh, of planning. So I think it's been good. It's, you know, it seems like now, right now, everybody's getting a little antsy to play. Uh, those things, uh, sometimes you got to adjust to whatever they tell you to do. So we don't blink. They tell us it's 16 days. 16 tells us seven and seven. We just go. Go down here, right here, very front. This is for Coach O, uh, Terrell Wild with the Boot Sports. Uh, can you touch on the importance of Michael Divinity's return to the defense yeah. and also Miles um, Brennan's uh, status for the ball game? Yeah. You know, uh, Mike is going to help us, especially in pass rush situations. Uh, now, there are some times a, a certain situation he could be on the field on first down. It all depends what personnel group that we get, but Mike is uh, – Mike is a, a very good player, a very good pass rusher. He brings energy to the football team. I want to give Mike credit for sticking with it. Uh, uh, he had to take a couple of games off. He had the opportunity. He could have left and get ready for the NFL. He didn't. He practiced with the team every day. He did the thing he's supposed to, and now he's playing in the championship game. Uh, Miles Vernon is fine, ready to go. Come right down here uh, on our right, third row. Ed Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. Christian Fulton rarely gets talked about this season. A lot of the focus gets put on Derek Stingley. Is that in some ways a compliment to the way Christian has played this season? Yes, I do believe. I do believe, you know, uh, they watch film, they look at tape, and, uh, you know, but the, the, they have great receivers, man. Those receivers uh, are going to be a challenge. Uh, obviously, we feel that uh, Derek is a phenomenal player, so is Christian. And Christian's a great story. Uh, Christian's a great story. His family's right here from New Orleans. He competed. He was suspended. Could not play. They fought to get the suspension. He came to practice every day. The suspension was uh, was uh, let go, and he could play. And uh, what a great story! Now he's playing right there from Rumble High School, right here in New Orleans. So a great story, Christian, outstanding player. We're gonna go all the way over to our right. 
Brett Martell with Associated Press. Um, Ed, could you reflect on Michael Divinity's decision to come back, specifically knowing that he may never play another game for LSU unless you made it this far? And um, I would also uh, welcome Coach Sweeney's comments on a player's decision to do something like that. Well, first of all, I'm for players playing throughout the year, regardless. It's your team, you play for your football team, one team, one heartbeat, that's my opinion and my opinion only. And I know there's special circumstances where players feel that they opt out to go to the NFL. And, uh, and again, that's their personal decision. But me personally, I think I'm a team man. Stay with your team. Uh, Michael did that. Uh, Michael had a chance to go out early last year. He wanted to come back. He wanted to finish his career at LSU. He had a bump in the road. Uh, he paid his penalty and he came back. So it tells you a lot about his character tell you a lot about his grit and who he is. I didn't, I didn't hear the question. What, what, was, what did you say again? St student athletes uh, bypassing bowl season. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ditto. Uh, I mean, I, I, mean I, I grew up uh, in college football. I've, I've been in college football since 1988. Uh, and I know there's different world and everybody makes their own decisions. That means somebody's right or wrong. Um, but I, I agree. I think that uh, you, you, me personally, I think it's team, you finish. Back over here in the center. Coach O, uh, I don't remember when you started the block out the noise mantra, but you've had some personal hurdles and obstacles to overcome in your life. I've heard yeah. you reference your faith and Kelly's faith getting you through those. Is that something that you've kind of always had or about you? Um, or did the block out the noise mantra even leak into your personal life? And No, I think that, uh, you know, at the beginning of my career, I had to block out the negative noise. And uh, there was a lot of negative noise. I, I couldn't let it affect me. And there was no way I would. And the other team would listen to it and stuff like that. But, you know, it was about blocking out the noise. And uh, then early in my career at uh, LSU, we, fa we faced some adversity. I mean, some strong adversity. And it was time to block out the noise. And uh, we can see through adversity, it made us stronger. And uh, I do believe the loss to Troy was a turning point in our program. Uh, it helped us realize uh, what we had to get done, what we had to do as coaching staff, as players. We could never let our hands down. We always have our hands up and ready to prepare for every game. Uh, I think that uh, so now the noise is good. And uh, look, they're going to be on that Twitter machine. I know they will. Uh, you can't stop it, you know what I'm saying? But we don't talk about individual awards. We don't talk about anything uh, except the task at hand, and we keep everything team, and I think that helps us out. Take our last question from the back on our left. Coach O. Ed Daniels, WGNO New Orleans. I wonder over the last few weeks or a few months if you have reflected on – when you were at Mandeville High School in your sabbatical, watching your son practice, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you're here right now. Kind of yeah. what that's... Well, now that you mention it, uh, I haven't. I really have been focusing on the game plan and, and uh, the monumental task we have on tomorrow night and giving everything to the football team. But you know what? Uh, it was a good time. Uh, I didn't get the job at USC. I realized now it was for a reason. It was to come home. I got to spend uh, a whole year. I'd never seen my kids play. I went to every practice, every game, cooked a lot of food in the backyard, had a blast. And then uh, I was very fortunate that Coach Miles hired me. I, always want, I wanted to come back to Louisiana. I wanted to be at LSU. And Coach Miles hired me for that. I'm forever.